After this lesson, students will be able to write function rules for arithmetic sequences and use the function rule or formula to determine future terms in the sequence. Do now. Describe each pattern and then find the next two terms in each pattern. Pause the movie and try the do now, do now on your own. Resume when you're ready. Number one, to get from 9 to 15 and then 15 to 21 and 21 to 27, we're adding 6 each time. If we continue with this pattern, 27 plus 6 gives us 33, and 33 plus 6 gives us 39. Number 2, to get from 3 to 9, 9 to 27, and 27 to 81, we're multiplying by 3 each time. So then we have to do 81 times 3, which is 243, and 243 times 3, which is 729. Number 3, you'll notice that the numbers alternate between positive and negative integers, which means that we must be multiplying by a negative. 2 times negative 2 gives us negative 4, negative 4 times negative 2 gives us positive 8, 8 times negative 2 gives us negative 16, and when we continue with this pattern, negative 16 times negative 2 is positive 32, and 32 times negative 2 is negative 64. A sequence is a fancy name for a number pattern. A term is each number in the sequence, and therefore, if you look at the example down here, negative 7, negative 3, 1, and 5 are examples of terms. We'll be learning about two different types of sequences this year, but the one we're focusing on in this lesson is called an arithmetic sequence. An arithmetic sequence is a pattern formed by adding a fixed number called a common difference to each previous term. Now the key idea here is that we keep adding the same number over and over in order to find the next term in the sequence. So if we look back at our do now, number one is an example of an arithmetic sequence because we're adding six each time. So six is our common difference. However, number two and number three are not examples of arithmetic sequences because we're multiplying a number. So because we are not adding a common difference, number two and number three are not examples of arithmetic sequences. Now let's do our example. What are the terms and what is the common difference for each of these number sequences? Well, in part A, the terms are negative seven, negative three, one, and 5. The common difference, which is the number that you add each time, would be positive 4. Because I add 4 to get to the next term in the sequence. So the common difference is 4. Pause the movie and try part B on your own and resume when you're ready. For part B, the terms are 17, 13, 9, and 5. The common difference, or the number that we keep adding each time, is negative 4. Notice how because the numbers are going down, but we're still looking for a number that we add, we know we're going to be adding a negative number. Now is a chance for a little bit of exploration. Take this number sequence, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, and try to determine what the hundredth term in the sequence would be without using a calculator and without listing out all hundred terms. 
See if you can come up with a strategy in order to effectively determine the hundredths term on your own. Pause the movie and resume when you're ready. The hundredth term in this sequence is 208. There are several ways that you can reach this answer, but I'm going to hold off on showing you how to do this and give you a chance to try two more on your own. What is the 50th term in this sequence? Pause the movie and try to problem solve. Resume the movie when you're ready. The 50th term in this sequence is 495. Again, I'm going to wait to show you how to do this and give you a chance to problem solve again. What is the 30th term in this sequence? Pause the movie and resume when you're ready. The 30th term is negative 82. Now hopefully you arrived at these answers using some method other than listing them out to the 30th, 50th, or 100th term. I'm going to show you just two of many ways that you can solve these types of problems. One way is to write a function rule for the sequence. For example, if I ask for the 15th term in this sequence, you can make an input-output table where the inputs are the term numbers and the outputs are the actual terms themselves. So, since our first term is 7, our input is 1 and our output is 7. Our second term is 11, so our input is 2 and our output is 11. Our third term is 15, so our input is 3 and our output is 15. And our fourth term is 19, so the input is 4 and the output is 19. Now, we can use the approach we used in previous lessons where we try to come up with a function rule for this input-output table. We check to see if it's linear. Well, it looks like our rise is plus 4, and our run is plus 1, so our slope, or rise over run, is 4 over 1, or 4. Now I can start to write my linear equation. f of x equals mx plus b, where m is our slope and b is our y-intercept. Now I can plug in the parts that I know. Well, I can pick any of these ordered pairs for my x and my f of x, where the input is x and the output is f of x. So let's pick, for example, this first ordered pair. f of x would be 7 for our first ordered pair. Our slope, m, is 4 times the x, which would be 1, plus b. 7 equals 4 plus b, subtract 4, and we find that b equals 3. So my rule for this input-output table is f of x equals 4x plus 3. I just inserted my slope of 4 and my y-intercept of 3. Now you may be wondering how this helps us to determine the 15th term in the sequence. Well, 15 represents the term number, or x. So now I can simply substitute 15 in for x in order to find my output or term. So f of 15 equals 60 plus 3, therefore the 15th term is 63. So if I were to continue this pattern, the 15th term in the sequence would be 63. Now you try these two questions by creating an input-output table, developing a function rule, and substituting in the term number for x. Pause the movie and resume when you're ready. So number one, we have our term numbers one, two, three, and four, 
and the actual terms themselves, 11, 23, 35, and 47. Our rise is 12. Our run is 1. So our slope is 12 over 1, or 12 f of x equals mx plus b. I can pick any of these ordered pairs, so f of x is 11, m is 12 times the x is 1 plus b. 11 equals 12 plus b, subtract 12, and you find that b equals negative 1. So we find that our function rule is f of x equals 12x minus 1. Now that I know the function rule for this sequence, I can go ahead and plug in 30 for x, since I'm looking for the 30th term. If I were to continue this table, I'm looking for when x is 30, I want to know what y is. So f of 30 equals 12 times 30 minus 1. You could do 12 times 3 is 36 and add a 0, so 360 minus 1. So f of 30 equals 359. Number 2, we can make our input-output table. Subtract 2 for our rise. We're adding 1 for our run. So our slope is negative 2 over 1 or negative 2. f of x equals mx plus b. We can pick our first order pair. f of x is negative 3. Our slope is negative 2. Our x is 1. And we're trying to solve for b. Negative 3 equals negative 2 plus b. Add 2 to both sides, and you get that b equals negative 1. So our function rule, f of x equals negative 2x minus 1. Now that we know our function rule, we can substitute 25 in for x. f of 25 equals negative 2 times 25 minus 1 f of 25 equals negative 50 minus 1, so f of 25 equals negative 51. Another way people solve arithmetic sequences is using this formula. a of n is what we're looking for, the nth term. A represents the first term in the sequence, so whatever number is listed first is A, plus the quantity of n minus 1 times D, where n represents the term number that you're looking for, and D represents the common difference in the, in the number sequence. Now let's talk about where this formula comes from. So our formula a of n equals a plus n minus 1 times d. If you look at this example, the common difference is 3 because we're adding 3 to get from 8 to 11, then we're adding 3 to get from 11 to 14, and we're adding 3 to get from 14 to 17. Now here we have four terms listed. But notice how we only added 3 three times in order to get to our fourth term. To get to our third term, we added 3 two times. To get to our second term, we added 3 one time. So that is where this part comes in, is that we multiply our common difference, for example, 3, times n minus 1. So if I'm looking for the fourth term, I only added 3 three times, which is why you would do 4 minus 1 to get 3. The a is the first term in the sequence, because after you figure out how much you're adding, you have to figure out what you're starting from. 
So even if I look, if I ignore for right now the fact that this question asks for the 40th term, let's say I didn't know that my fourth term was 17. In order to figure out that the fourth term was 17, I would have done 4 minus 1, which is 3, times our common difference of 3, which would give us 3 times 3, or 9, and that is how much I'm adding to my initial number of 8. 8 plus 9 does give us 17. So that's where this formula comes from. So now you can use it in order to find the 40th term. A of 40 equals 8 plus our term number that we're looking for, which is 40, which we're going to subtract 1 from and multiply by our common difference, which we found to be 3. So A of 40, we're taking our initial 8 and we're adding 3 39 times. Order of operations. So we now know that A of 40, we're taking our initial 8 and adding 117 to it. which gives us 125. So the 40th term is 125. Now you try. Pause the movie and resume when you're ready. So we're looking for the 15th term. We take our initial number, which is 9. We're adding the common difference 15 minus 1 times, so 14 times, and the common difference is negative 14 because we're adding negative 14 each time. We do 14 times negative 14. which is 196, well, negative 196. And we're doing 9 minus 196. So A of 15 equals negative 187. Now, sometimes most of the hard work will be done for you. And they'll have given you the formula and then they'll ask you for the 10th term or some other term in that sequence. So here, if they're asking for the 10th term, that means that they want you to substitute in 10 for the n and solve. So a of 10 equals 32 plus 10 minus 1 times negative 2. a of 10 equals 32 plus 9 times negative 2. A of 10 equals 32 minus 18. Which is 14. So the 10th term in this sequence is 14.